This is the most expensive home in the world at $250 million. It's also the tallest residential building in the world to the point where you could actually see the curvature of the earth right from your living room. And today, you'll get to see exactly what it's like to live here in the heart of New York City at Central Park Tower. This is the penthouse. It's the highest residential home on the planet. So you're looking up towards the Adirondack Mountains, right? So you're basically looking up towards the horizon of upstate New York. That's the George Washington Bridge. Looks really, really small here. You know, just playing piano here, you're looking to the right, you're looking at upstate New York, and you're looking to the left, and you're waving down at the Statue of Liberty. You have Lower Manhattan. But this is the Grand Salon. Upstairs is mostly our bedroom floors, okay. so like the family floor. And then the top floor is your entertaining floor. You know, you have a ballroom that is equivalent to the size of a full NBA court basketball okay. court. And then the outdoor space, you get the chef's kitchen, you've got all the security and everything. So what makes the property so expensive? The comparable sales mostly, right? We're asking just over $14,000 a square foot, not including the exterior here. The most recent large penthouse on Billionaire's Row just sold below us at a building in front of us for $20,000 a square foot. So as we look at the comps, we're over $5,000 a square foot less expensive. And then you also look at replacement costs. Took $3 billion to get to this place. It's something people don't really realize because like you and I are walking through this apartment, it's fully furnished, it's beautiful, it's great. Like this, to get to this point took almost two decades. So when you think about the price point, it's not just, okay, this apartment that's in the air with these views, it's the amount of time that went into assembling the different lots over here with the developer, the amount of effort that went into getting us here, like there's 360 million pounds of concrete. There's a part of the value that goes into, will that ever be replaced? And sure, could someone do another huge tower somewhere else in the city? Yes, I mean, not in front of us. Your views are, are protected, right? Mm -hmm. We're on the park. Um, but with costs, I mean, everything's just gonna get more and more and more expensive. Yeah. So this is the dining area. Again, it could be whatever you want. Yeah. Florida ceiling windows all the way through. You're watching the ball drop in Times Square while you're having dinner. It is right there. We are on top of that it. It's so close. Our, it's right there. I mean, our team literally wow. was in here at New Year's getting the footage and serious? it was nuts. Times Square was full. It was crazy. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like you're right here leading down towards Broadway and you're watching, you're basically watching Manhattan yes. grow. And the original towers, I mean, that's the Empire State Building. See that little guy? Yeah. That's Empire State. That tiny thing? That little, that <laughs> little, that little person over there, that's, oh that's, uh, that's the Chrysler Building, MetLife. You've got the Summit, Juan Vanderbilt. That's all of Hudson Yards. The person who can afford a $250 million home is a, is a multi-billionaire. And so it'll be a, a multi-billionaire trophy real estate collector an investor. They probably have multiple other homes around the world and they want to own the highest residential home on the planet. And definitely the, the single greatest trophy asset in New York City. So how do you prevent the building from swaying since we're mm -hmm. so tall? So a couple different ways. Um, think about a sailboat, right? Yeah. If you see a sailboat, you kind of have that keel underneath. And so that prevents the boat, for the most part, from flipping over, right, when it's just sitting there or in waves. So a building like this has what's called a damper. So it's a massive, massive, massive counterweight that's up towards the top of the building that counters the movement of the earth and the movement of wind. And so in this building, it's the largest damper uh, in the world. It's about 1,200 tons. So this is kitchen number one. Okay, how right? of how many kitchens? of two. So there's a family kitchen okay. and then you have a catering kitchen. That's a fully built chef's kitchen, everything okay. like, you know, speed dishwashers and, and all of that. So the interiors of this apartment were done by Rotet Studios. And so all the finishes are custom, everything slabs from Italy, you name it. The That's architecture gorgeous. is Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill. They're famous for doing some of the tallest towers yeah. in the world. How did you get the listing? Like I get every listing, I, I beg and I plead and I cry and I kick and I scream until I get it. Um, no, I, I, I've built a brand over 15 years of, of selling some of the most expensive and luxurious homes in the world from 20 million to $150 million. And so when this was about to come on, the developer who I've known for a long time reached out to me and said, I have something I wanna show you. And 
said, do you think you can sell it? I said, yes, um, but it won't be quiet. And he said, okay. So this is the breakfast room. Okay. So you've got these beautiful stone floors, extra high ceilings. You've got exposures, I mean, everywhere, right? So that's New Jersey. I mean, you can see much, much further than New Jersey, you but can. it's it's pretty insane. Um, it's I mean, for, again, from breakfast, you could just be sitting here with a cup of coffee all day long if you want, and you'll watch the sun rise, go over the city, and then set without ever having to move. This is the receiving room, the reception room. As the entrance predominantly is going to be right there, kind of okay. where we started, you open the door, the first thing you see is Central Park is your runway. I'm gonna take a look, I'm so scared. But you can see down, <laughs> You could see down to the rink and it. everything. There's yeah. a private restaurant in this building just for unit owners. Yeah. And it's on the 100th floor. It's called 10 Cubed. It's the only 100th floor club in the United States. Um, and so you have dinner like right here, a thousand feet in the air. It's pretty nuts. And you can see the fog starting to burn out I over can there. See. You can see the river is really, really blue now, right now. Is the club open to the public no. or just people in the building? Everything is just open for the building. Really? Yeah. You have multiple swimming pools. I mean, there's, there's, thousands and thousands of square feet of amenities yeah. just for the building. There's a full on spa, basketball court, fitness center. There's a movie theater, business center, children's playroom. I mean, it's so, so when you're going to the club, it's just your neighbors. That's yeah, it. I mean, think about a country club, right? Like if you're at a country club, you have dinner there. You could bring guests, wow. but people aren't driving in off the street to come pick up a steak. The amenity package in this building is also another big reason that people buy here because it's unlike anything I've ever seen in a residential building, especially in the United States. It has everything from the private club we talked about on the 100th floor. So it's a restaurant, a menu catered by three separate Michelin star chefs, the cigar room, the conference rooms, the, the, the lounge that's there. You could have a wedding, you could have holiday events, everything. And there's just a lot more, but those are the main ones. So this is your desk, have a seat. This is you, you could be sitting here, you could be doing, you could be doing your, your show and everything wow. here, and then that's your view. I could get used to this. Yep. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe. How much do you spend on marketing personally for a property like this? An amazing amount of money. We are probably going to be around a hundred grand out of pocket for this, not including the like the time, right? The content, the the staffing and payroll of our team that spends a lot of time here. What's the craziest thing that you've done to sell a listing? You know, I, I hired a, a marching band to surround <laughs> a townhouse once to drown out the noise so that we could sell that house and we sold it for eight million dollars. Right. So now this is actually a really, really special feat of engineering. This is a 50 foot glass atrium. And so how do you carry it up three floors without actually anchoring it into the facade? So it's, it's anchored into the columns and then reinforced back into the floors as you go up. And so it's, it's weaving more than anything else. So this whole wing, that's on the park is your primary suite. You have two separate bathrooms, gorgeous, obviously, everything book matched. You've got the floating tub here that's floating, literally. I think this is probably the highest residential bathtub on <laughs> earth. Like, I, I, it's like everything is a first here. It's hell. And then this is your primary bedroom. Got your full seating wow. area. So this is the view you wake up to. At this point, you're kind of oh like, my all right. Gosh. This would be fun with a laser pointer. It just, I don't know, would it make it that so, far? It would. You could wreck havoc from up here. Yeah. I work just as much, honestly. I, I, I've tried to figure out ways to work less, but then I just end up doing more. And then you have higher quality work, higher quality problems as mm -hmm. you kind of progress in your career. And so, uh, and the stakes become so much higher. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I started, I was working seven days a week all the time, but the stakes were, if I don't rent an apartment and get a commission, I might not be able to pay my rent. Now it's, I have my own company. I have, you know, almost 350 people now that depend on me. You know, I've got to pay payrolls and there's taxes and consequences and risk. And so now I got to work extra hard in my mind to keep, to keep it up and to build it and to grow it. So it's just a different type of work, but the work ethic hasn't changed. All right, so after you, we'll go oh, up to you. the 131st floor. We're going to 1,416 feet above wow. the streets of New York City. And without further ado, wow. the highest 
private ballroom on Earth. Oh my gosh. So this is 2,000 square feet. You have the same 27 foot ceilings. When we first listed this, I guess two months ago or so, yeah. um, I had a 100 person plated dinner in here and it was, it, was like, it was like it was empty because the room is so big. Really? It's hard to see because it's so big, but this is like almost, a, I mean, it's a, it's a basketball court over 1400 feet in the air. I'm so afraid of getting close to this. You're okay, I'll hold you. <laughs> oh. This probably makes it worse. <laughs> Talk about a job down there. You're saying, look at this. How high? Oh my oh God. My, oh my gosh. Ah, oh, man. How do they do that? Ah. Oh. What do you think a buyer would use this for? Probably exactly what I've used it for, which is, you know, there's a lot of people who've come through who are incredibly wealthy and so they also are big donors. So they'll do a private fundraiser sure. once a quarter in their own penthouse. Right, do private dinners, like different, th I mean, you, you could do runway shows in here. There's so many things that you can do. You know, I was actually thinking if there's any NBA players that, that follow you that are there, if you want to do some fun content and you're in New York City, I I'll get a basketball hoop up here and we'll, we'll, we'll play a game. You I think that would it. be fun. We're also in this apartment, we're above sound. So you'll see when we go on the terrace, okay. there's no noise. You don't hear the hustle and bustle of the street. You don't hear sirens. It's incredible because you have the entire view of Central Park. You could see the Statue of Liberty. You could see basically the entire world from up here. The sound almost dissipates probably, you know, close to where this is in the top. And you're almost completely insulated from the wind with these. Every other buyer for this is gonna come in and say, where's the doors, where are the exits? How could somebody come up here and find me, right? They're gonna be very nervous and worried about security. And so that's pretty tantamount in this building to protecting whoever this person might be. And like, this is the penthouse. There is a lower duplex that's beneath us, doesn't have the third floor or the outdoor space for the low price of $175 million. So, you know, there are, there, every apartment in this building is expensive. There is no one that is buying into this apartment that is, that is making ends meet. Um, and so security is really, really, really important to everybody and that's probably what they think about first. So the other great thing about this building is that it comes with state-of-the-art amenities like this incredible gym with extremely tall ceilings. You also have a squash and a basketball court in here. I'm gonna try to make a three-pointer. Every single time I do it, I miss. Oh, man. What is your advice for any young entrepreneurs or real estate agents who want to get into the business? You just got to get started. I meet so many people who like dip their toe and then take it out or try real estate for a couple months and then go and do something else because they want the nine to five or they want the paycheck and they want the security. Like, I am a firm believer that anyone can do this business. If we're talking about brokerage, mm -hmm. right? being a real estate developer is a different story. Being an architect, a contractor, there's a lot of different things in the real estate world. But if you want to sell property, um, anyone can do it. You just have to put in the work and you have to be willing to also work on yourself. This is a very personal business, right? Um, and so I think you just have to get in, just start, and don't take any days off for the first three years. And I think they also have to like and subscribe if they haven't done that already. If you do that, it'll go a long way in your future real estate career. What's your skincare routine? You got such good skin. My skincare routine. <laughs> um, 